everyone, what's up? Coach Roger here, and I'm here to bring you some interesting information that I want to share with you because I like to talk success principles. And it's part of every class that I do, and this is going up on YouTube, so if you're not in my class, come on, take a seat, and come join us as we learn a little bit about the success principles, goal setting, self-talk, and all that other fun stuff that's involved in creating a more successful life. So before we can get started to anything, if you see me turn left, right here is my computer screen. It just has some bullet points that I want to touch on as we're going over all this stuff. And it's going to be about figure a 30 minute talk right now. And we're going to cover some information and we're going to try and create an atmosphere where success is a byproduct of our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. So the first most important thing, which I don't think is talked about enough, is your success is completely in your hands. The knowledge you have essentially is irrelevant. Now, what do you mean the knowledge you have is irrelevant? Well, it's very relevant, but it's not always relevant towards success. So what I mean by that is, how can two salespeople work in the exact same territory at the exact same times, but yet one can make $5,000 more a week than the other person? Now, it's not the territory, it's not what they're selling, so it has to be something greater than that. And generally in my research, what you find is the people that are the most successful wake up every single day excited to provide value to their customers. The people that aren't excited wake up every day wondering, how come that guy's getting all the business? This territory's overrun by him. Nothing's working out. This product's not even that good. So those feelings and those thoughts and those words and those actions that we are all associate with that kind of state is going to bring us a less of success. So the knowledge is important. But if you don't know how to apply the knowledge that you have, it's not going to get you anywhere. So one thing I heard, which I love, is knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. So knowing what to do with your knowledge and applying it every single day is what's going to help you get there. If we think that we're already beaten, chances are we are. Unless there's somebody out there that's really thinking a lot worse of a beating or taking a lot worse of a beating mentally than you are. So the idea is, what can we do to make sure that we are becoming the most successful? So we've heard a lot about goals and goal setting and things of that nature. Let me tell you right now that goal setting is important. We are goal-based creatures, right? So everything that you do is based off of a goal. So the clothes that I'm wearing was a goal and what I wanted to wear today. I haven't put a Queensboro shirt on in, let's say, six weeks. But I knew I was doing a Queensboro video or a video for my Queensboro class, so I wanted to put, so the goal was, what shirt am I going to wear? So this was the goal accomplished. My goal was to have a watch that I wanted to wear, so it's on. My goal is to have a necklace, so I wear it. My goal was to fast for the morning, so I haven't eaten yet. So see, there's all goals associated. My goal was to wake up at 4.30 a.m. I've done that. My goal was to make this video. I'm doing that. So you see the idea, everything that we do in life is associated with the goals. But now, let's think about how can these goals change. So a goal of mine to wake up has been a, a goal. Of waking up at 4.30 has happened for a long time. But if you feel tired, you feel like it's a waste of time, you feel like it's not going to change anything, you feel like it's not necessary, then why would you do it? But then when you change like the feelings, the state of, hey, it's more time to myself, it's time where nobody else is up by me, it's time to meditate, it's time to read, it's time to fill my brain with things that I want to hear to be uplifted. So then it changed it, now it's more inspiring and more ability to wake up. So when we start to set goals, or you start to set goals for yourself, it's important to think about how these goals make you feel. Because you have a great big goal, but if it makes you feel poorly, it's not going to do anything for you. You know, all of we hear about affirmations and saying all these things. Just so you know, an affirmation is the very thing that can take you further away from your goal, opposed to bring you close to it. And the reason why this is, is because an affirmation when being used by saying, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, but it makes you feel poor on the inside because you look at what you have, it's not going to do anything. If you say, I am fit, I am fit, I am fit, then you look in the mirror and you're not fit, and you're like, I'm not fit, then it's not going to make you feel good. In which case, that affirmation opposed to bringing you closer to your goal is actually going to push it away. See, the biggest thing that, the biggest thing to share with you guys from the research is basically that the feeling is the answer. So words essentially are nothing. Think about it. If somebody tells you they love you, but you feel that they don't, do those words have any meaning to you? No. 
But if somebody tells you they love you and you feel that feeling of love inside you as well, think about how different that whole situation plays out. So the more that you feel about something, like think in your life, every time you felt good or something, something's definitely gonna happen, I feel it, I feel it, what happens? Generally something good happens. What about the time you get the pit in your stomach? Hey, nothing's gonna work out, I feel it, this is not gonna, gonna be a bad idea, it's gonna be a bad idea, and then what happens? Sure enough, you get the reinforcement that it's a bad idea. Even though you're trying to use uplifting words to bring you out of that feeling state, like no, it's gonna be good, now you're trying to talk yourself into something that you don't feel good about. Remember, those feelings are your guidance system. Think of those feelings as like a compass that's bringing you to the direction that you want to go. So every time that you feel poorly about something, your compass is saying, you're going in the wrong direction. North is this way. You're trying to head that way. We don't know what you're doing. And then you sit there and you get there like, oh, I knew this wasn't going to work out. Those feelings are important. We all get them, we all get them. Something is said to us, a situation happens in front of us, something happens in our life, and it elicits feelings in us. Those feelings are the true words that are being used because feelings create pictures in our head. If I say to somebody that you are gonna own a million dollar sports car and you have money to do that, you're going to feel great about it. Like, yeah, you know what, I actually think I'm gonna get one. If I tell you you're going to own a million dollar sports car, but you look at your bank account and there's $5 and you're like, it's never going to happen. So the feeling is what's going to draw more into it. We'll say, well, I'm supposed to make believe that this stuff is happening. It's not a matter of make believing or making believe. It's not a matter of that. What it is a matter of is to find the best possible feeling, to be grateful for what you have in your life currently, because the more that you can feel gratitude and happiness for what you currently have, the more of it you'll experience in your life. Think about when you've had a couple of weeks in a row that were great, good feelings, everything was going great, everything was going great, and then your three-dimensional reality hits you with something, and now you start to feel poorly on the inside, and now your great couple of weeks turns into a bad couple of weeks. Or vice versa, where you're feeling bad, you're feeling bad, it's never going to get over a bad breakup, or you've got a bad grade, you're just feeling terrible about yourself, and you're feeling terrible about yourself. And then what happens? Generally, more things are bad, notice comes along, until finally, we start listening to some uplifting music, we start talking to uplifting friends, we wake up one day and like, you know what, I'm not going to let this define me anymore. And then all of a sudden, your luck changes. All of a sudden, by feeling differently, new experiences come into your life. See, one thing that's not talked about enough is we are magnetic. We give off magnetism, vibration. We attract people towards us. Think about it from your experience. You ever be sitting in a party or a situation and you just feel an attraction towards a person? And I'm not talking from a sense of attracted to their good looking, just like you want to speak to them or you hear them start talking and you start to gravitate towards them to listen to what they're saying. It's happened to all of us. We felt that attraction from somebody. So that attraction is very real. Things that pull towards our, our experience and into our life. Now, the bigger and better things of attracting more is because we're not actually giving ourselves the opportunity to feel the right way about it. We're looking at our current circumstances in our life and we're allowing it to define us. But that is no definition because at the end of the day, whether you have billions of dollars in the bank or you have zero dollars in the bank, you still have to get dressed every day like everybody else. In the old saying, which is a little dated now, you put your pants on and put your pants on one leg at a time, which doesn't follow suit to everybody because there are people that are successful with no legs. There are people that are successful with no arms. But you know what they do have in common? Every day they wake up just like us regardless of what their situation is. Every day they wake up and they're happy with what they have. You ever heard money doesn't buy happiness? It's because money is not the happiness. You have to be happy first. And then more happiness comes into your life. See, it's all about the way that we feel about different things in our life. The more that you can feel good about your life, the more good you will see in your life. Now I say, oh, I'm gonna feel good, everything's gonna be great. No. There's going to be some kind of contrast in your life. How can you know what you want if you don't know what you don't want? You need to first understand what you don't like, what you don't want, and then you get to say, okay, if I don't want that, I don't like that, then I want the opposite of it. So let's think about it from this perspective. If you don't have health or you're not healthy, what do you want? To be healthy. You, but you wouldn't know you want to be healthy, right? You ever get a sore throat and you never realize how much you appreciate swallowing with your throat until your throat hurts? 
You ever get a paper cut in your finger and you never realize how much you appreciate that your fingers don't hurt until everything you grab hurts your finger? See, these feeling states are so important, so you have to realize that what you feel is going to manifest into your life. And then we don't really appreciate some of the things that we have until they're actually taken away from us. So what are you doing to make sure that you're inside the best possible feeling state at all times? See, again, that, that sore throat lets you know that you want a healthy throat, but you don't think about it until you actually have it. That cut on your finger doesn't let you know you want a non-cut finger until you actually have the cut on your finger. There's contrast in that. It creates appreciation. How, once you get, if any of you been really sick and then you get healthy, think about it like, oh my God, like thank God this is so much better and you feel better. So the idea is to make sure that we're managing our feeling states. The most important state that you could possibly have is gratitude and love. It's really, really, really important because by showing gratitude and love, because remember, you know, before we can even get into gratitude and love, we have to realize that everything that we see on the outside world is how we internalize and perceive everything on the outside world. Because two people can look at the exact same situation and have two totally different responses to it. So for example, I have friends that like to watch people get beat up on YouTube. I don't like that at all. I don't like it at all. Nobody should be hurt. It's not fun. It's not cool. To me, it makes me feel hurt. It makes me not want to look at it. It makes me want to shield my eyes. Well, I have friends that will sit there and look at it and laugh at it. I think it's terrible. They think it's funny. So what's happening on the outside is actually a internalization of how we feel or an outward expression of how we feel about something. So if that's the case, we have to realize that it's not what's happening around us, but it's the way that we feel on it on the inside that's letting us know this is something that we want to see more of or be brought towards or if it's something that we don't want to be around. So the idea is we have to find ways to feel love and gratitude because that'll draw more love and gratitude into our life. So what makes us feel love and gratitude is subjective and completely unique to you. So what do you find that's loving? Well, the first thing that you should do is to find to love yourself. So my point with the fighting and outward expression is usually if you think there's no love in the world, the first place you have to look is on the inside and say, do I love myself? Can you look in the mirror right now and go tell yourself you love yourself while staring in your eyes and not feel weird? Because if you can't do that and you can't love yourself, then it's going to be very hard for anybody else to love you. So if we could figure this out, and we could say, hey, you know what? I'm alive today, just like those people that we talked about earlier with no arms, no legs, with legs, billionaires, poor people. I'm alive. So there's a reason to be happy. Love yourself because you've been through it all. If your life's been hard, you made it through. You're still alive. You're here. Love yourself for that. Be grateful for that. If your life has been easy, love yourself for that because not everybody's life is very easy. So find ways to find gratitude and to find love to appreciate yourself because that's how we start getting in the right feeling places. Waking up every day, it's going to be another one of those days, nothing's ever going to work out, blah, blah, blah. That's going to draw you more into your life. That's going to make you wake up at 65 years old and look around and be like, my life hasn't changed in 40 years. And I say that because I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it in my family. I've seen it. And of course, the research of research and research to reinforce these things. So you, the, the first place to look is to be grateful for what you have in your life. Grateful there's a roof over your head. Grateful for this amazing piece of machinery that you get to watch this video on. Just this morning, I woke up and my phone wasn't loading the weather because I wanted to see the weather for today. And at first I'm like, this damn thing is not working. What's going on? I'm like, wait a minute. Like if this was 30 years ago, this doesn't exist. Thank God I have the information in my hand right now. Right now, it's right here in my palm. Oh no, it took 45 seconds opposed to the five seconds I'm used to. Because on my Wi-Fi, I wasn't working, I had to turn it off. I mean, but you get the idea. I went from a state of ungrateful because why isn't this thing working? And then thought, hey, you know what? Maybe there's a reason why it's not working. I'm so thankful I have this in my hand. Let me reset it, let me turn off my Wi-Fi, let me see what I can get, and then sure enough, I have the weather, which is why I know I didn't need a sweatshirt today. So the idea is to find things in your life that you already have that you can be grateful for. Be grateful for your car, be grateful for public transportation, be grateful for your life, be grateful for your family, be grateful for something. And then just try every day waking up and tell yourself I love you. Maybe even give yourself a little namaste bow or something in the mirror and tell yourself how great you are. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with telling yourself you're great because you are great. 
because inside you is a greatness and a value that you offer to the world. You just haven't explored it yet because nobody tells you it's in there. I promise you it's in there. I promise you it's in there. And only using love and gratitude is gonna make it come out. So now let's get a little bit into goal setting. So goal setting is not what most people think, which is, what's a goal? Oh, it's when you achieve something. I mean, yeah, we could say you achieve something that's fine, but that's not what's important about the goal. Because achieving things will eventually lose its feelings of goodness because it's all material. You don't get to keep it. But what you do get to keep is feeling good because you feel good. So what's important with a goal is not what you get, but it's who you become. Right? So what I say to like Division One baseball players or baseball players, if you want to become a Division One athlete and that's your goal, you have to become a Division One athlete. Meaning training early in the morning, uh, getting all your schoolwork done, taking care of you. I mean, just your exercising, your nutrition, your and trying to find some time to actually be a functioning young person, or if you're an athlete and older, just try and find family time. You get the idea. If you want to be a business owner, if your goal is to own a business someday, great goal, okay, I'm going to own a business. Well, so is, what is that business? Because you have to become someone that's in that field. Then you have to think about it, then you have to become a business owner. Right now you're not a business owner, but the ability to be a business owner is in you. So become the business owner. And then when you become the business owner, then you set your next goal. See, the biggest thing with goals, especially big goals, is we think that it's so big that if I achieve it, I'm not going to want anything else. Or if I achieve it, it's scary. I don't know what else is to come. But that's the fun of life. You're not supposed to plan everything. Just so you know, anxiety comes when we are either living in a past experience that's already happened that we don't want to resurface, or we're creating a future based off of a past experience that we don't want to happen. If you are living right now, there's no anxiety. Yesterday doesn't matter because you can't change it, but you can change the way you feel about it. Something was terrible happened. It ruined your life temporarily for six months, but now all of a sudden things are starting to come back better. Rose is starting to come back up. You can't allow that to define you for the rest of your life. So what it happened? It was a learning experience. Be thankful for the experience that it happened now and not on your deathbed. Because if you do that, now you're giving yourself the ability to learn and to grow and that's what life is all about. So when we set goals, the goal is not what you get. Because if it's what you get, it gets scary. It's who you become. And in life, we are either doing two things. We are either growing or we are dying. That is a choice that you have to make. So do you want to expand? Do you want to grow? Do you want to provide value? Do you want to do all these things for future generations, for people? Then you have to become that person. If you want to get better grades in school, you have to become a better student. So the goal is I want A's. What does that mean? You have to become someone that studies. You have to become someone that takes notes. You have to become someone that does extra reading. You have to become somebody that's going to get those straight A's. So when we look at things like, oh, maybe I'm not that smart. No, you're just not doing things that it takes to be a person that is successful in the area of schooling that you're trying to be better at. I'm not good at math. How often are you becoming somebody that looks at math and studies math and works on math? See, these are the things that we have to ask ourselves these questions because if we're not becoming something that we choose to become, well, then you're becoming part of somebody else's plan. Now, your plan and other people's plans can interlock, but you want to make sure that you have a purpose in that plan, not just becoming a pawn in somebody else's plan and just moving one space every time they ask you to move one space, but being able to move freely about while co-creating something with somebody else. So that's the essence of that. Okay, your superpower as a human being is your ability to focus. What do you focus on all day? What are you thinking about all day? Because if you're not thinking about that goal and thinking about how you become the person to achieve that goal, then what you're doing is you're thinking about what you can't have. 90% of people in the world think about what they don't want. They think about what they don't want. If most people, most people want more money, what do we think about? Not having enough. Never getting ahead, always having just enough, opposed to thinking in abundance. 
Whether you think in abundance or not, what does it matter? You still have to go out and you still have to create the actions. It just changes the way that you feel on the inside. So if you come from a place of lack, you will find a reason why at the end of the month, you have more bills than money. Opposed to looking at it from a different perspective and saying, hey, I'm abundant. Every day thing gets better for me. And then feel that. Feel that. Go into the day with an optimistic attitude. Go into your job and have a smile on your face all day. And watch what happens. People start saying, what's wrong with you? Because think about it. We live in a society where if you walk around like, oh, like, it's a cloudy outside. You know, this weather's never going to get good. Yeah, I know. It's really crazy. It stinks. Da, 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 da. Or, hey, you know, being coked up with what's going on right now with this with this virus is like, really, it sucks, man. It's just terrible. Da, da. Or you can sit there and just say, hey, this is an opportunity for me to read more books. This is an opportunity for me to grow. This is not for, And take it from a different perspective and see where that brings you. Either way, it's going to be the same situation. Either way, we are in the same situation. Either way, you don't have money. Either way, we're all locked up. Either way, it's happening. So why not just change the way that you think about it? You know, to be a little personal, I just heard a story of my brother-in-law's parents' kitchen just burned down. And when speaking to him, it was the most amazing thing. Because instead of saying, oh, my kitchen, he's like, ah. he's like, it's all right, I need a new kitchen anyway. And now I don't have to pay for it. See, it's the way that we view situations that are going to outplay our outcome. Because either way, the kitchen's burned down. So we could walk around saying, shit, or we could sit there and say, hey, listen, it happened. What are you going to do about it? How are we going to move forward? Hey, at least I'm getting a new kitchen in my house. See, it's all about a meaning and the perception that we put into things. So make sure you're putting your meaning and your effort and your feeling into the right direction. Whether you think good or bad, you still have to move in a direction. You still have to act. And remember, by doing nothing, then you're creating nothing. By doing something, you're creating something. So why not take control of the creative process and create what you want by thinking in the direction you want? So if you don't have the amount of money that you want in your pocket, stop telling yourself and everybody else that you're never going to have the money that you want and how lucky other people are. Just tell yourself that, hey, I'm blessed for what I have. I'm blessed for what I have and I know it multiplies. And if you start doing these things, you'll start to see it start happening. You'll start changing the way that you feel. But again, don't say I'm blessed for what I have and it multiplies and then sit there and talk to yourself like, I'm never going to have any money. Because that is going to be the overlying thing. Imagine like your goal is in this direction, right? And there's a train traveling this direction. Now all of a sudden, you start to focus on where you just were. You're putting the engine on the other side and now you're starting to drive back. And then eventually what we do as people is we start thinking this way and we start thinking this way. And now we have an engine that's trying to pull our train in two different directions at the same speed, which means it becomes stagnant and nothing happens. And then we wake up our, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we open our eyes at 45, I'm like, this is my lot in life. Nothing ever good is going to happen for me. But yet all along, your train has never moved because you had one going in that direction, one going in this direction, you got stuck in the middle. Don't be stuck in the middle. Take the caboose. Now listen, is there a chance that as you're taking the train in the direction of your goal that you might have to switch tracks because there's an obstruction on the road and get to the next track, which might take you a little longer to get to your goal, but you will become it? Yes. Is there a chance that there'll be logs in front of the tracks and you have to get out of the train and literally lift everyone off the track, which might take you a little long time because you have to do it all by yourself before you can start moving in the direction of your goal again? Yes. But that's the contrast. That's part of letting you know what you want and know what you don't want. It's letting you know it's your natural guidance set, letting you know that you're either on course or you're off course. Let's see. Another thing that I want to share with you guys is there's something called a mind-heart connection. So what they're finding now is that the heart actually has little cells inside them that are equivalent to the cells that are in your brain. So there's more and more research that's coming out now that's actually showing that the heart has the ability to think. Now this is deep because where do your feelings usually come from? They usually hit from here and expand out of your body. Most people. So if that's the case, if they're generally expanding your feelings from maybe I have a pit in my stomach, or I just feel so loved right now, think about where all those feelings are happening. So these feelings are in your heart. So we have, we have to create a mind-heart connection. And the way that we do that is by feeling the best possible feelings we can feel or thinking the thoughts that make us feel the best. So if you can think thoughts that make you feel good, then you're starting to create a mind-heart connection. 
doing things, a place of gratitude, a place of love, you're starting to create that mind heart connection. But what do most people do? They look in the mirror and they talk about all the things they don't like about themselves. They talk about all the money they don't have. They talk about all the relationships they don't have. They talk about their ex that they don't like. Focus on what you like. By focusing on what you like, you start to create a mind heart connection. The stronger that mind heart connection is, the better you're going to feel on a daily basis. And regardless, if you have billions of dollars but you feel like crap, that's not a good life. If you have zero dollars and you feel awesome every day, that's an awesome life. Because what would anybody wish for anybody that they love? To be happy. Happiness is one of the most important things that we can have as people. So think about how can you create more happiness so you can incorporate or increase your mind heart connection. My computer. All right, so we're almost there, about 25 minutes in. There's, we have to get into like self-talk. Self-talk is really important because uh, it ties into everything that we're, we're discussing here today. And there's no two voices in your head. Like we've seen this old depiction of you have an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder and one's telling you one thing, another's telling you another thing. There's only one voice inside your head. Hate to break it to you, and that's your voice. So those negative thoughts that you hear, or those things that try and counter your ability to move further, faster, or things of that nature, are not your thoughts, but they are your thoughts. It's your voice, but it's based off of somebody else's programming. It's based off of a parent, a friend, a TV show, somebody that you trust in society, a coach that once told you you weren't good enough, you're never gonna achieve, life is too hard, money's too hard to come across, money's the root of all evil, you're never gonna find love, having children is, 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 is a curse, you're never gonna be able to afford your home, what, 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 you keep naming it, it's somebody else's program. You have the choice to decide, but you have to be consciously aware of it. So what happens is you have to ask yourself, what am I under the influence right now? So if you start to have feelings, but check in all day, what am I under the influence of right now? So there's someone named Abraham Hicks, and she shared this in one of her videos, and it is awesome. Just throughout the day, periodically, check in with yourself, what am I under the influence of? Now, we're not talking drugs or alcohol. Am I under the influence of happiness? Am I under the influence of anger? Am I under the influence of sadness? Because now you're starting to check in with yourself, and you're starting to see that what is going on in your head. We are programmed, human beings are programmed. 95% of an untrained human being's day is unconscious. Meaning we're just like beep, boop, bop, robot, just moving from point A to point B, doing what we did yesterday, because we did it yesterday, so doing it tomorrow, because we did it yesterday, and doing it tomorrow, because we did it yesterday, and doing it today, because we did it yesterday. You get the idea. So if we just become these people that are moving in this direction, and going, and just moving, and becoming part of a program, it's time to check in and see what program is running. It's time to check in and see what program is running. It's like having a computer that keeps crashing and never realizing there's actually a virus that's doing it. Negative thoughts are viruses. Your brain is a supercomputer. Do not allow the virus to attack the supercomputer. Put the firewall up. You put the firewall by saying, what am I under the influence of right now? If you're under the influence of anger, search for the best possible feeling and be under the influence of happiness. Remember a time you were happy. Think about a family member that you love tremendously or, or a spouse or kids or whatever it is and use them as the ability to get you under the influence of happiness and love and take you away from the influence of anger, fear, and hate. So what are you under the influence of? Throughout the day, periodically, what am I under the influence of right now? What am I under the influence of right now? But what's going to happen? 95% of people don't do this because that ego voice can say, eh, it's not going to work anyway, why are you wasting your time? That's past programming. It's past programming that you picked up. And not to mention, did you know that us as people and children basically are programmed, so we have no thoughts. Children have zero thoughts of their own from the age of the last trimester in mommy's belly all the way up until the age seven. So I have a two-year-old, maybe some of you guys have children that you're around, and all of a sudden they say something like, how did you know that? Because it was programmed into them. They heard it from TV, they heard it from YouTube, they heard it from a parent, an uncle, a grandmother. They heard it and it got programmed down and now it's with them forever. It's with them forever. So it's not malicious, it's not on purpose, it's accidental based off of past programming for other people not knowing what the past programming is running. So the goal of lectures like this is to give out the information on how we truly are in control of this experience we are having in this life. 
And it's all about the way that we think and feel and act that is going to bring us what we have or what we don't have in our life. Try and view life optimistically. Just try it. Try it for a week and see what happens. And let life happen. Stop trying to plan life out. You are not in control of the plan. But you are in control about the direction that you want to move. And that's it. So stop trying to think about how everything's going to work out because the thinking about how everything is going to work out is the resistance towards what you're trying to achieve. Opposed to saying, listen, this is the direction I'm going to go. These are the actions I feel like I should take based off of the knowledge that I'm choosing to apply. And then just move in that direction. And know what's going to happen? If you do it for a few weeks, you get a, a, a feedback. And then based off the feedback you receive, you see if you have to shift or adjust your direction. And then you do so. All right, last couple of things. So, judging's gotta be out the window. You cannot judge anybody else because you're not judging anybody else, you're judging yourself. Well, how am I judging somebody else if you're talking about somebody else? Because what you're judging that you don't like about somebody else, I might like. Your brother might like, your sister might like, your spouse might like, your mother, father, who knows, somebody else might like it. So what you're judging and saying that is unacceptable is because it's something that's unacceptable in you. So before you go to judge somebody else, look inside yourself and say, hey, why am I saying this about somebody else? What is it about me that is drawing this feeling or this intention or these words out of me? Because by taking responsibility for stuff like that, you're going to move forward and further faster. But by blaming or judging somebody else, you're putting that on yourself. How does it make you feel when you judge somebody else? It doesn't make you feel good because you don't want to be judged. The golden rule is the rule to live your life by. And that is, do unto others as you want others to do unto you. If you can live by that, you'll never feel bad. So if you don't want to be judged, don't judge anybody. But what do most people do? We gossip, gossip, gossip. We saw this person, we saw this person, we saw that person. Who cares? Who cares? Why not talk about ideas? Why not talk about advancement? Why not talk about growth? Why not talk about love? Don't judge. Judging pushes you further back. It impedes your success. It diminishes your ability to go further faster. So judging's gotta go. Anger's gotta go. See, these are feelings, these are feelings. These feelings all of a sudden go outside you. So if you start to feel really angry, what happens? You draw more anger towards you. You draw the person that cuts you off and starts to curse at you. Just be less. They would say, well, I'm just having a great day and someone cut me off. Well, maybe you were having a great day and the person that cut you off is racing to the hospital to see their dying mother. So what's the point of getting angry? You don't know. Don't create the story. Just let it happen. Are you happy? Are you safe? Are you okay? Good. Let it be. Let it be. That's what I got for you guys. I'm just looking at anything else I want to touch on my notes. Uh, this is stuff I could talk about for days. Finally broke into YouTube with some of this stuff. So this is part class and part what I'm going to be doing. I mean, a lot more videos like this because it's time. It's time to share this information. It's time to wake up. It's time to live the life that we deserve to live. So take this, empower yourself. Do good things. Create a healthy body. Create a healthy mind. Create a healthy life. Create value in this world for more people. You can do it. I know you can. If you're watching this video and if you're not, I believe in you. I believe in you. Do you believe in yourself? Start asking yourself that question. And then once you realize that you do, start telling yourself, I believe in myself. I believe in my abilities. I have the ability to move further faster. I am the creator of my reality. See how it serves you. So, for everybody in PE416, it's been an interesting time. I appreciate all of you. Uh, it's been, I actually got to meet you guys on like my softball class. And it was really awesome meeting you. I'm always here. If you need anything, comments below, we're always there. DM me on Instagram, at CoachRogers09. And if you're not in my class, please join the community. Because we're here. And again, I'm on IG. Have been off that a little while, but now... It's time to start making my comeback. And uh, I used to sign off by saying, until I see you again, keep doing your thing. But I thought about that. And I don't want you to keep doing your thing. And you shouldn't want you to keep doing your thing. It's keep doing what it takes to become who you want to be. See you soon.